Hello YouTube, Dave here again. We're going to take a look today at uh, the recently released Dungeonology. Uh, this was put out by Wizards of the Coast in collaboration with uh, Candlewick Press. Uh, it retails for $24.99 or $29.99 Canadian. Um, and it's basically serving as an introduction to uh, Dungeons and & Dragons and the Forgotten Realms. Uh, Dungeonology is part of another series of books that all have the ology suffix. Um, we started to think back in 2008, if I recall correctly, with the book Dragonology. And it is intended for younger readers. Uh, so this isn't exactly like a, an actual source book that would be used uh, for serious role players. Uh, but if you know somebody that's interested, you know, younger kid, uh, this would be a great book for them. Uh, it doesn't really do a whole lot on its website, on the Wizards website, to really uh, express the fact that it, this is intended more for uh, for young readers. Um, but it's still okay, it's still a pretty, uh, pretty cool little book, so we're just going to flip through it. Uh, there's only 30 pages in the entire thing. Uh, I'm not going to show up every single page, but we'll flip through uh, a few of them and we'll kind of see what we got here. Uh, one of the first things about it is actually the size of the book is quite a bit, uh, well not quite a bit, but it's bigger than other uh, books. Uh, now the spine is kind of out there as well. Uh, so you can see the, uh, the pages are along there and the, uh, the spine. You know, it does look nice and I'm sure it would look nice on the shelf. Um, but it is, like I said, bigger than other role-playing books. So I've got the player's handbook here. It's lined up with the uh, the top of the book, so you can see some space there on the bottom, as well as on the side. So it is it is a larger book. Uh, may not fit quite on your bookshelves if they're sized specifically for the other uh, role-playing books, but we'll still have a look and uh, see what we got here. Now with the uh, the spine design the way that it is, it does. Um, lay flat a lot easier than some of the other role-playing books, so it's that's kind of cool for, as far as that goes. And many of the pages have some sort of like little hidden extra thing in them uh, that you can either flip up or unfold. Uh, in this case, the very opening has uh, a letter here, which looks like it's been sealed, so you just kind of pop it open. And uh, I'm not going to read the whole thing. But it's sort of like a, a letter written in character by Elminster, kind of explaining uh, a bit about the book as well as uh, who it was written by. Uh, it's written from the perspective of uh, Volo. Uh, he's got another book th uh, that he's kind of the, the author of uh, coming out soon, which is Volo's Guide to Monsters. Uh, I don't have that one yet, uh, but I'm hoping to get that as soon as it comes out, so I'll be able to do a review for that as well. Uh, but for now, let's just try and get that... Fold it back in. I'm not going to worry about it right now. And we'll just move on, look at some of the pages here. So, uh, like I said, it's got some stuff here kind of written uh, in character. And it starts off with, uh, you know, the adventuring party goes over sort of the basic archetypes with the uh, wizard, fighter, rogue, and cleric. Uh, talks a little bit about the other classes. So, it's sort of like an introductory thing on. Uh, Dungeons and Dragons, you get to learn some of the basics of, of it. You got the classes. Uh, this part here folds out to talk about the races that are in the 5th edition player's handbook. And, you know, you go on to, uh, to dungeon equipment, so it looks at, you know, armor, weapons, uh, gear, uh, starter packs, which kind of goes over some of the generic stuff, which is actually kind of cool if you're new to, uh, to role-playing. Uh, knowing that, you know, things to look for would be, you know, a backpack, uh, ten pittons, uh, torches. Uh, it doesn't seem to have the ten-foot pole in there, though, which is kind of a uh, dungeon-exploring staple, but uh, I guess that's okay. A little section on coins there. Uh, this section here with magic and magic items, one of the things I actually really like is the uh, little spell book here. So it kind of flips through, and it goes through some of, like, the more iconic or standard uh, spells that you would start off with. So for cantrips, it's got uh, talks a little bit about firebolt, light, mending, and then the spells: charm, magic, or charm person, detect magic, comprehend languages, feather fall, thunder wave, and magic missile. So it sort of represents what a uh, first level uh, character would have for, like a wizard would have in their spell book. And you know, just some other things here. Let's see if I can. Kind of hard to get it to 
focus, but let's just, you know, so like the, the Wanda Wonder is something that's kind of hidden there as well. So it's just a neat little uh, sort of activity thing almost. You kind of look through it, uh, see what elements that you can interact with, which is pretty cool. Uh, there is a nice uh, fold-out map here. Uh, but it shows, instead of showing the entire world of the Forgotten Realms, it tends to focus on, you know, the parts that have been in a lot of the adventures, uh, especially of late. So this is more like the, uh, the, the north and the Sword Coast, uh, going down like Daggerford, Waterdeep, um, Neverwinter, Luskin, uh, then it has Icewind Dale and stuff like that, so, but that's pretty cool, folds out. Okay, and just a few other things here. So like I said, I'm not going to go through all the secrets of the book. I don't want to spoil everything. Uh, but just kind of wanted to show off a little bit about, you know, what's in here. Uh, the section on monsters, it's got Beholder, Mind Flare. Uh, and then it's got a little uh, fold-out thing for the dragon, or flip-open thing for the dragons. And talks about some of the bigger villains. So we've got uh, Smooth Camera. So we got Wolf, Demogorgon. Uh, Acerac, so he hasn't been involved in any of the adventures as of yet, uh, at least for 5th uh, edition. Uh, I know that there was a 4th uh, edition adventure, uh, like the Return to the Tomb of Horrors type of thing, uh, which really expanded upon that, so I'm kind of wondering if this may be foreshadowing uh, something that could be uh, coming in the future, because, you know, we've got Tiamat, Demogorgon, uh, Orcus, uh, things like that. So it'll be interesting to see if they do something with Acerac in the Forgotten Realms. Uh, see if they uh, do something involving Zastam, who's like the big uh, red wizard uh, in in Thay. And of course, it shows off some of the iconic heroes. So you know, we got Dritz Duerden, and of course uh, Minsk and Boo with his miniature giant space hamster, uh, and Elminster over here as well. Uh, so that's pretty much all that's in that part of the book. Um, now the back of the book here does have something kind of cool, but one little issue with mine is there's a little bit of glue that got stuck to this here, and it caused some damage as you can see on this part here, which really is unfortunate. Uh, I haven't tried seeing if there's any way to get that off of there, but it it's noticeable and it kind of sucks, but uh, this here is actually a holographic picture. I don't know how well it's going to or show up on camera, but I think that's pretty cool with the dragon sticking its head in. Uh, but one of my favorite things about this entire book is this part right here. So this lifts right out. Uh, it is attached by a little uh, plastic tab here that you have to take off, so just be careful when doing that. Uh, you don't want to pull too uh, forcefully and cause it to, to rip or tear. But Volo's Guide to the Forgotten Realms, uh, this is the same cover that they use for the third edition campaign setting which looks really cool, so it's in that same style. And like I said, this is actually my, my favorite part of the uh, of the book. It talks about, you know, the Sword Coast in the north. Uh, it gives a little bit of regional information. I mean, not a lot. Uh, and of course it goes over uh, the last three, I think it's just the last three. I don't think it talks about the uh, thing with the giants yet, but uh, it does go a little bit over the last three of the campaigns that were put out by Wizard of the Coast, so you know, the Call to the Dragon, uh, that was obviously part of the uh, Rise of Tiamat um, adventures, uh, Rise of the Elementals, you know, was Prince of the Apocalypse, uh, Demons of the Underdark uh, was out of the Abyss, so uh, it gives you a little bit of information there, uh, which, you know, you can kind of have when you're, if you decide to run any of those campaigns, and just a few different locations here, so we got Daggerford, Baldur's Gate, Candlekeep, uh, Neverwinter, Waterdeep, uh, Skullport. It's not as much information necessarily as I would have liked, uh, but it does give some flavor to it. Uh, Gunnelgrim, Thay, and there's the Tomb of Horrors written in there as well, So, which again, that was sort of a Greyhawk staple. So I'm really starting to wonder if, there's gonna, if they're going to end up doing something with that at a, uh, a later date, but hard to say. And then of course, just got some Underdark some of the monsters there, and it even does talk a little bit about different places outside of the main Forgotten Realms campaign setting. So Evermeet, uh, Chult, which is down to the south, but it also has Karatura and Zakara, uh, which were 
uh, settings in second edition. So I think Karatura. Um, one of them was Oriental and the other was sort of an Aztec theme and at this point in time I honestly can't remember which one was which um, but they were two different uh, settings along those lines that were set in the same uh, world of Toril and then we got a little bit about the cosmology uh, and Barovia which was part of the Curse of Strahd so uh, it talks about quite a few different uh, different locations this here like I said is probably my favorite part of the entire thing um, but it's still kind of a cool, uh, cool book. You know, kind of a neat idea. Uh, glad to see something like this is put out uh, for Dungeons and & Dragons. And this is the kind of thing that, you know, I consider getting, you know, my 10-year-old nephew uh, as a way of starting to really kind of get him into uh, the D&D game. As far as uh, if you're, you know, an adult, you don't have, you know, a child or children in your family that, you know, would be interested in this sort of thing, I uh, don't know how useful something like this would really be. Uh, the price isn't terrible. Um, you know, in Canada, like I said, I paid thirty dollars for it. Um, but it's 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 a neat it's a neat book. And again, like I said, I might end up getting something like this for my uh, for my nephew for for Christmas. So we'll kind of see how that goes. Maybe that and the uh, the starter set are uh, hard to say. But uh, anyway, I hope this kind of helped. Uh, just kind of knowing what it's about. Um, like I said, the the description of it on the website. I don't want to say it's misleading, uh, but it makes it sound like there's more in this than there really is, because it talks about you know exp you know describing all these different locations, and it does uh, most of what it kind of mentions on the information blurb on the website, uh, on the wizard's website is really basically just contained in this little book here. So if you're looking for sort of a definitive campaign setting type of thing, uh, then this really isn't something that you should consider. Uh, but if you're a collector and you want to get all the 5th edition uh, officially licensed stuff that comes out, you know, like I said, the price isn't bad. And it's really great, again, if you have uh, some children that you want to kind of introduce to uh, Dungeons & Dragons. So uh, I like it. I think it's kind of cool. Uh, I'm not going to get much more use out of it than, you know, just kind of flipping through it and looking through it for the purposes of this video. Other than that little booklet in the back will probably get a little bit more use than anything else. Uh, but again, I just kind of wanted to share that, and uh, again, if you were considering getting it, um, but you didn't know really what it was about, then I hope that this helps clarify things, and if you were on the fence with it, uh, I hope that this kind of helps you make your decision. Uh, anyway, I appreciate you guys taking the time to watch this video, and we'll see you next time.